Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons. He's a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and co-chair of the president's re-election campaign. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Shannon. It's great to be on with you again. Okay, so let's talk about this. There, the White House, um, the National Security Commission is saying, uh, National Security Council, there's not a deal yet, but there is talk of this potential ceasefire deal, three to five days maybe, dozens of hostages maybe. But the president's got a brand new op-ed out today, and he wrote this in the op-ed. As long as Hamas clings to its ideology of destruction, a ceasefire is not peace. To Hamas's members, every ceasefire is time. They exploit to rebuild their stockpile of rockets, reposition fighters, and restart the killing by attacking attacking innocence again. You're at the Halifax International Security Forum. How is talk of the ceasefire playing there? Um, so, Shannon, President Biden has been clear and forceful in responding to Hamas's terrible, horrific terrorist attacks of six weeks ago. He went to Israel. He embraced Pre Prime Minister Netanyahu. He's deployed two aircraft carrier groups to push back on any potential for Iran to try and strengthen and broaden the conflict in the Middle East. And here at the Halifax Security conference this weekend, a bipartisan delegation from Congress met with leaders from across our NATO allies uh, and from other countries where there are folks here who are advocates for freedom. So human rights advocates from countries like uh, Iran and Venezuela and Russia, opponents of the current regimes, as well as partners from Canada, from Germany, from other NATO countries, uh, legislators from Taiwan and elsewhere. And there have been lots of conversations about the importance of the United States standing strong behind Ukraine and our more than 50 partners in supporting Ukraine in their resistance to Russian aggression and standing strong in supporting Israel in their important work against the terrorists of Hamas. News of a potential hostage deal, Shannon, is great news just before Thanksgiving for the 10 American families whose loved ones are being held hostage and the more than 230 others. I've met with those families, Shannon, in Tel Aviv and in Washington, and it's heartbreaking to be with parents who don't know how their children are doing uh, and who believe they are being held in tunnels by Hamas. Uh, beneath Gaza. This is a good development today. But the president himself in this op-ed, which as you note, it, it links together the fights against um, Russia and its aggression in Ukraine, Hamas, uh, but the president himself expresses grave concern about what a ceasefire would allow Hamas to do in continuing to kill and re-equip. Is there a concern about that part of the equation? Well, let's draw a distinction here, Shannon, between a ceasefire. Uh, some folks are calling for a ceasefire in protests across Europe and in our country, by which they mean Israel should stop fighting Hamas, uh, should end their campaign in Gaza, or a pause that has been negotiated between Israel and Hamas to allow the release of hostages, uh, Israeli and American and other nationality hostages, uh, and allow um, food and fuel and medicine to get in to Gaza. A negotiated brief pause in the fighting uh, I think would be a good thing and I would strongly support a ceasefire, meaning an end to Israel's campaign against Hamas. I don't support and neither does the president. Okay, let's talk about the fact that Israel aid uh, is tied up in the politics of Washington. Um, every Democratic senator yes. voted no against the package the House had passed. It takes money from the IRS to fund that standalone Israel aid. So now the conversation is this bigger supplemental. The White House wants Ukraine and all kinds of things tied together. There are a number of GOP senators who say it will not move forward. Ukraine funding unless it's coupled with serious change to border policy, not more money for the border for processing people in, but actually having a more secure structure against people showing up and entering without our way to track them in and moving through the country. Um, the president's issue uh, or approval on this issue of the border, it, he's upside down by 30 points on this. Americans don't think he's handling it well. At the same time, House Homeland Security has a committee report out this week saying that what's happening at the border could cost taxpayers hundreds of thousands, excuse me, billions of dollars a year and saying this, it's morally unacceptable that American taxpayer dollars should be funneled to those who violate our laws and demand expansive taxpayer funded benefits like education, health care, housing and more. Where are we on negotiations in the Senate about change to border policy as it may be tied to Ukraine funding? Shannon, there is a bipartisan group of senators who've been working hard this weekend, last week, and will continue working through the Thanksgiving holiday to come forward with a proposal 
for a few focused policy changes that would address the dramatic increase in recent months in the number of folks crossing our border. We have to strike an important balance here, Shannon, between protecting America's historic role as a place of asylum for those who are genuinely fleeing oppression because of their faith, uh, their politics, uh, their ethnicity or their background, um, and reducing what is currently a real challenge at our border. President Biden has repeatedly demanded of Congress that we take up and pass bipartisan reforms that will improve our border security. And in the supplemental funding request he sent up to Congress, President Biden is demanding the single largest additional appropriation to improve border security in our history. I think we can and well, should find the again, middle ground here and move forward to secure Republicans are saying that that's money to process people into this country, not to stop people from showing up Ill illegally and crossing into the border. I mean, there's an admission that there are 1.7 potentially million gotaways, people we don't even know who they are or where they are in this country, in addition to millions of other people who have been processed into this country, with some of them distant court dates that they may not actually show up for. Shannon, that's a mischaracterization of the supplemental request. Um, it would hire literally thousands of more Border Patrol agents, Custom and Border Patrol agents, put in place at border crossings, um, advanced non-intrusive inspection uh, systems that would allow us to scan more and more of the vehicles that cross our border every day and fund an increase in deportation flights. So to say that the additional funding request is just to process more people into the United States, uh, misses a core goal of that funding request. But I'll say this, I'm willing to work with Republicans on changing policy to make sure that we protect asylum as something that genuinely protects those uh, with a legitimate asylum claim and yet reduces the number of folks crossing the border who ultimately don't have a legitimate mm -hmm. asylum claim and years later will be deported. That is a middle point that we should work on together because it's critical that we fund Ukraine, that we fund Israel, and that we provide humanitarian relief, which is the other key mm -hmm. part of this package. The week yeah. before Thanksgiving, I hope folks will reflect on the fact that providing humanitarian assistance into Ukraine, into Gaza, and a dozen other countries is something that is a long bipartisan tradition in the United States and a key part of our leadership in the world. And it does seem like there's almost, not total, but almost universal um, support for that humanitarian aid. I know there are a few voices out there who think there need to be serious strings tied to that. I want to talk to you about 2024 because you are co-chairing the president's national reelection campaign. David Axelrod, um, senior advisor at one point to President Obama, a key player in the Obama-Biden administration, says this, I think he has a 50-50 shot here, but no better than that. Maybe a little worse. They've got a real problem that they're counting on Trump to win it for them. I remember Hillary doing that too. We've got scores of new polling at Fox News that all paint a very tough picture on re-election for the White House. And there are polls, Marquette and USA Today and many others that also show serious problems for this president and his re-election campaign. What do you make of David Axelrod's comments? That's an interesting point from David. Um, in 2007, a year out from the 2008 election, I'll remind you uh, that poll after poll was showing that Barack Obama was going to lose to Rudy Giuliani, and in 2011, that Barack Obama was going to lose to Mitt Romney. Head-to-head -head polls a year out, frankly, don't say much at all. What matters is the elections that just happened. Um, the off-year elections were uh, very positive for Democrats across the country. We far exceeded expectations in 2022 in the midterm elections. So across special elections, midterm elections, um, I see real positives for this president, and those are rooted in his record of actual accomplishment. We have the lowest unemployment for the longest period of time in modern American history. He's really accomplished significant things on a bipartisan basis, investments in infrastructure, reducing prescription drug prices, investments in community mental health and in gun safety, and frankly, rebuilding advanced manufacturing. I came out of manufacturing um, to run for office. We've seen 800,000 new high quality manufacturing jobs created, part of the 14 million new jobs in just the last wow. two years. That's a strong record to run on, Shannon, and I believe the president okay. will make that case in the coming year. Well, you know on the jobs numbers, a number of fact checkers, including across the political spectrum, have said it's not accurate to say those jobs were created. Many of them came back after COVID, but they aren't counting as new jobs. And for whatever reason, all of the things that you listed are not yet resonating with the American electorate. Um, we're going to talk about more polls 
further into the show, um, and we'll see how that actually works out in the year to come. A year is a long time in politics. Senator, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Shannon.